Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about something kind of specific, although eventually you'll realize how unspecific and common it actually is. The example I'm going to be giving today involves a baseball being thrown in outer space. Now it's not something that you typically do in your everyday life, but you'll see that it has connections to things that you do commonly do. So in this example, a baseball is being thrown in outer space. Due to the lack of gravity or friction, it's going to move forward at a constant velocity. So if we were to throw that baseball and we know that it has a velocity, we can track it every couple of seconds and we can very easily predict where it's going to be because of its constant velocity. So each of these positions of the baseball could be one second apart or two seconds apart, but either way, its motion is very reliable. Now I'm going to change the scenario a little bit, so I'm going to shrink myself here and get out of the way. Uh, let's change the situation and see what happens. This time I'm going to throw the baseball forward, but I'm going to attach a rocket to it. And it's going to be a rear-facing rocket. And according to Newton's third law of motion, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the rear-facing rocket that's blowing out jet fuel should cause the baseball to accelerate forward. So the question here is, how will the baseball behave after being thrown? And the word behave in this case specifically refers to how the ball will accelerate. Will it truly accelerate and speed up? Or will it decelerate and slow down? Or will it have no change in its behavior and it will keep moving at a constant velocity? Well, that rocket is going to be applying a forward thrust force to the baseball. And it already has some speed, but now there's an additional force that's going to cause it to accelerate. So the ball will end up ahead of where the previous example's ball would be. Now, that rocket that's attached to the ball one second later, let's say, is still going to be applying a forward thrust force. Now, when something has a force applied to it, it accelerates as a result. So this thing is going to move even farther the next second. And then the force of the rocket's thrust is going to push it even farther the next second. So you can see the pattern here. Every second that we track this ball, it's going to end up much, much farther than the last time we tracked it because it's constantly accelerating as a result of this constant force to the right. Now, if we analyze this situation for a moment, we can notice that the force is pointing to the right and the ball's motion or velocity is to the right as well. So you could say that the force and the velocity agree with one another. They're oriented in the same direction. As a result of that agreement, the ball is going to accelerate. It's going to add on to what it's doing instead of reducing what it's doing. So because the force and velocity agree, the result is acceleration. Now let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's throw that ball in outer space one more time, but this time let's attach a front-facing rocket to the ball. How will the baseball behave after being thrown this time? And again, the word behave or behavior refers to acceleration, deceleration, or staying the same constant velocity. Which one's gonna happen? Well, in this case, because the rocket is oriented to the right, the ball's going to have a thrust force oriented to the left. That's Newton's third law of motion. So that leftward force actually contradicts the motion of the ball, which is trying to move to the right. So as a result, that ball is going to accelerate to the left. In other words, it's going to decelerate. So the ball is going to end up a little bit less distance out than the original ball did. Uh, and then there's still going to be a leftward thrust force acting on it as a result of that rocket. So the next second that we track it, it's going to go even less distance. And then the force of the rocket is going to cause it to go even less distance the next time. And then that thrust force is going to cause it to go even less distance and so on and so on. So in this case, the force, which was to the left, and the velocity, which was to the right, disagreed with each other. They were oriented in different directions. They contradicted each other. As a result, the ball decelerated. So now you can kind of recognize this pattern that when the velocity and uh, force or net force on an object are oriented in the same direction, the ball will accelerate. And if they're oriented in opposite directions, the ball will decelerate. So now let's take this ball and throw it in space one more time and we'll add kind of an extra complication to it. Let's attach both rockets to the ball and see what happens. How will the baseball behave now? Well, each of those rockets is going to apply a thrust force in a different direction. We could draw those forces like this. Now, when those two forces add up, what's the result? The result is a cancellation or no net force at all. When there's no net force on an object or when net force is equal to zero, that means that overall in total, nothing is gonna end up happening to that object. And so according to Newton's second law of motion, which says that the net force on an object is equal to its mass multiplied by its rate of acceleration, if the net force is zero, that means that the acceleration must be zero as well. 
So if acceleration is zero, that means there's no speeding up and no slowing down. In other words, constant speed or constant velocity. So in this case, we have balanced forces, which means that the forces perfectly cancel each other out and add up to zero. So how is this ball going to behave? Well, it's going to behave exactly like the first ball, and it's going to travel exactly the same amount of distance after one second. Now, those rockets are still going to be supplying force, but it's still forces that cancel out. So one second later, the ball is going to be in the same position as example number one. And as those forces keep pushing, a total of nothing will still be happening. So the ball will still travel with a constant velocity, and the rockets still keep pushing, and still nothing happens on and on and on. So interestingly, the ball with no rockets and the ball with two rockets behaved exactly the same way because in both cases, the net force on the ball was equal to zero. Now it's important to note that the thing that got the ball moving in the first place in each example was the hand, and the hand threw the ball with a force. But we're not really talking about that initial force, we're looking at the ball just as it's traveling. And if we're just looking at the ball as it's traveling, then the first and fourth examples are completely identical to one another. In both cases, the net force equals zero, so the acceleration is zero, so the speed is constant, and the forces, we say, are balanced. Now, this is a concept that you will need to be familiar with as we get into more complicated physics problems with forces, um, because you might expect that if there's a bunch of forces on an object, that it should speed up or it should slow down. But in fact, it's actually fairly common for an object with balanced forces acting on it to move at a constant velocity. So here's an example of a person pushing a shopping cart, which is much more common than throwing a baseball in outer space. You might have done this this very week. So this person is going to be applying a forward force to the cart by pressing on the handle at the top. And if that was the only force acting on the cart, then it would speed up. But as you know, the wheels on the bottom of a cart experience just a little bit of friction as they roll against the ground. So you could say there's a frictional force acting in the opposite direction. Now, when these two forces add up on the shopping cart, the result is that there's going to be a net force equal to zero because the forward and backward forces will cancel each other out. The result of net force equaling zero is that the acceleration will equal zero according to Newton's second law of motion. So if acceleration is zero, that means there will be a constant velocity in the forward direction. Now this isn't that complicated because you can push a cart forward at a consistent speed pretty easily. It's pretty much what people do with shopping carts the whole time they're shopping is push it at a constant speed and then occasionally they'll stop and go pick out groceries and then push it at a constant speed again. Now, if you changed the engineering behind a shopping cart to make it less efficient, you could end up with something like this where maybe you remove the wheels and instead replace it with a bar of metal, something that has to grind against the tile of the shopping mall. Um, and that is not going to be very efficient at all. That's going to give you lots of friction. And the result is you're going to have a huge frictional force that prevents you from moving the cart forward. Now, if you still want that cart to move at a constant velocity, you're going to have to push with a really strong applied force. Um, but if you push hard enough, you could still get that same constant velocity that you had before. So just keep in mind that when an object is moving forward, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a net force. It could just mean that whatever forward forces are acting on it are being perfectly canceled out by the forces that are opposing it. So that's all for today. I hope to see you in the next video where we'll talk more about physics and maybe forces, maybe tacos. I don't know. See you then.